<laughs> Hello, sir. It's right now time. <laughs> uh, Drew, we're talking about custom grinds today. I am super excited about this. Me too. We don't have we, we have not given this a lot of spotlight. So for a while That's now, true. we've been working with Mark Bacchus of nibgrinder.com, who's amazing, and really we've is. been uh, offering some of his grinds, specifically the CSI, which is his cursive smooth, smooth italic, italic yes. um, on some various Homo sapiens by Visconti. And they've been doing really well. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback about them. But yeah, we haven't really talked about them, nor have we talked about Gina Salarino's nibs. Correct. So we're going to highlight both of these great nibmeisters. Uh, and, you know, honestly, this has been something that, Drew, we have talked about for six years, seven years, something like that, of being able to offer custom grinds. But it takes a little bit of special knowledge. Special knowledge. And practice. Co coordination and with the professionals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've pursued training with several different nib professionals. Mm -hmm. You and I went and visited Mark a couple of years ago down in Atlanta, got to see his studio, spend a full day with him. He was super, super nice about it. Showed us his whole setup. Had training with Richard Bender. We got to sit down with Mike Masayama for a couple hours. So we've had- Brian Gray. Several different, that's right, Brian Gray. So we've had several different people with different nib experience. We've been able to they do things. learn enough about how to do this, uh, the whole nib grinding thing so much that we really want to do it, but you know, we're still not at that point. Well, we have the knowledge yeah. now, just like I have the knowledge of how to play football, but it doesn't <laughs> mean that I could score a touchdown right. on the field. You right. know what I mean? It takes practice, it takes training, it takes, um, well, it takes, you know, risk yeah. and, and bravery. Absolutely, so to provide uh, you with that <laughs> touchdown experience, we have partnered Whoa. with Custom wow. Nib Studio and Nib Grinder. The irony of you and I using sports metaphors Yeah, I'm really for proud this. of you guys. Yes. Football touchdown. Drew and I know. Dunk it into the home run zone. That's no. right. <laughs> Celebrate the team wins. There you go. End, so, end zone. Um, basically, why would we want to do these custom grinds other than we've just kind of wanted to do it? Well, for a long time, we've wanted to offer these grinds because they're not something that come from the manufacturer. That too. Um, so we're not offering a 1.1 millimeter stub on, you know, maybe a pen that wouldn't have it because you can get those in other pens. So we right. wanted to feature nibs that you really can't get elsewhere. Uh, we wanted to support these craftsmen and women because these are people that are really doing this out of passion. They're doing this for the pen community. They're going to pen shows. They're spending a lot of time on Instagram and places, educating people, showing you know, what nibs can do and really honing that craft and there's not that many of them. Right. So we want to give them some love. Um, it's more convenient. So you can get custom grinds from both Mark and Gina. So nibgrinder.com, custom nib studio. That's, they're both like independent, right. you know, operations. They've got their own websites. So if you do want to contact them directly and contract them for some work, oh, yeah. you absolutely can. Yeah. And but we, we don't get a cut of that. That is just like goodwill yeah. for them. Um, you know, there's, we have an affiliation in this aspect of offering the custom grinds, but for that, it's just, you know, they're good people. We want to send you their way. If you drop a nib and it's bent and you send it to them, or you, you have a, some random pen you want to send in for a custom grind, they can do that. Absolutely. Um, and uh, by us offering these pre-ground nibs, it saves a lot of logistics because we can send them nibs in a batch. We can then offer them. You can buy a pen from us. It's already pre-ground. You get it just like you would get any other pen. Yeah, ships under the normal timeline. Yeah, and you don't have to coordinate then shipping it to them and getting it back and paying shipping all around. So right. it's more convenient for you and them. Um, yeah. Great. Those are the reasons why. So it looks like we have some pens here. We do. We don't we... have an example of Mark Bacchus's CSI grind, but um, do you want out. to cover that first or do you want to cover Gina's nibs? Yeah, let's talk about Mark's first. But before we do that, just a little bit of groundwork I got to lay here. A little disclaimer. Oh, disclama disclamation. Disclamation um, as a word that I like to use because it's nonsensical. Um, it's important for us to have permission to be able to do this from our manufacturers. So um, basically when you're doing any type of alteration to the pen body, if we were to do any type of engraving or anything like that, that would be altering what the manufacturer intended for that specific part or piece of the pen. So by grinding a nib different from the way the manufacturer left, had to leave their factory, mm -hmm you're basically altering it. They are not going to guarantee the work that is done to it because they didn't do it. Makes right. sense, right? They're guaranteeing the pen that left their facility. Once it becomes a different pen, it doesn't do cover it. doesn't, doesn't yeah. cover it. It's, it's no different than if you buy a <clears throat> new car from whatever manufacturer 
Ford and you replace a part with an aftermarket part, Ford will not warranty that replaced part, right? So right. this is the kind of the same deal. So it's important to us from the manufacturers that we represent since we're authorized retailers to basically have the graces to say, yes, you have permission to do this. And then we have the proper disclaimers and stuff on the site to say, if you have a problem with the nib and the way that it operates, you gotta come to us, don't send it to the manufacturer because it's been altered. Makes cool. sense. Um, so we're, we're trying to work with each manufacturer. Each one has their own preference about whether or not it's cool to do this. So we're trying to build relations between these dim meisters, between each manufacturer. Some manufacturers are a little more hesitant about doing this than others. So not every manufacturer doing it, which is why we're doing it with Mark and Visconti and then Pelican and Gina to start. But we're trying to do more. Yes. We want to expand from there. Um, yeah, that's about it. All right. Now you want to actually get into employment yeah. defense. You're waiting very patiently, Drew. Yeah, I'm not patient, though. As are all of you in YouTube yes. land. Um, okay, so let's start out with Mark Bacchus. Mark Bacchus. So I don't have this pen to show. I have another one that's ground, but we can cover that one very quickly because right. we've already talked about that one a bit. So it's his medium cursive italic. Mm -hmm. um, cursive smooth italic. So that's what he calls it. The difference between a cursive italic and a cursive smooth italic is... Not 100% clear. Not a it's lot. All hand, it's all hand work. Right. But the idea is that it's a little crisper than a stub. Right. right. So it's because it lies somewhere. A cursive italic is going to provide you with great line variation, more so than you would get with a stub, but might be a little less forgiving as far as rotation goes. Stub's going to be probably the most forgiving of all of that sort of grind. You know, Absolutely. the wide downstroke, thin cross stroke. The CSI is going to land somewhere in between that. You're going to get your line variation but it's also gonna give you a little bit more forgiveness if you are prone to rotation. So it's a really easy uh, grind to start with if you want that line variation, but uh, maybe the standard cursive italic isn't quite your style yet. Absolutely, and no one no one really from the, I think the only manufacturer I've seen offer like a true cursive italic has been Aurora. They're the only ones that have, have done that. Everybody everybody else, you gotta get a customer. Right, on. if you've ever used an Aurora Ypsilon with their italic nib, that thing's pretty crisp. Yeah. And, and if you've have, used one, you know what we're talking about. And they have, on their gold nibs, We don't. it's not available on every pen, but they do offer both a stub and an italic. That italic right. is more of a cursive mm -hmm. italic. So that's more what it's gonna be like if you have any experience with that. Um, and so we have that. We started out with just the medium CSI because it's right. about a 0.7 millimeter line width as opposed to a point point, sorry, 1.1, .1. like you see kind of in a bunch of places, that's what our Gule nib is, that's what a lot of other manufacturers yeah. have. So it's finer than basically everything else that's offered. So you can write a little a little smaller, mm -hmm. still get line variation. But on the Visconti, you get that really, really smooth writing experience. And additionally, since it's coming from Mark, it's going to write perfectly every time. Like mm -hmm. the guy is a wizard with a nib. So not only are you getting that great custom grind, but he's gonna be making sure that thing is tuned to perfection as well. Really we've also good. started offering a fine uh, CSI as well. So we've done medium and fine with Mark Bacchus, correct? Uh, we did a broad. We did a broad, medium a and broad. The fine is coming from Chino. That's right, okay. Well, well we can do a fine. We could we do could. a fine. We could, so we've so done we're, broad and medium. We're testing this out, right? So we're trying to get there. We're trying to understand from you all, which is part of why we're doing a video like this, why, you know, what it is that you're interested in. All right. So let's talk about Gina now. Let's do that. So Gina, um, have not worked with her quite as long, but she's got a lot of nib experience as tons, well. Tons, tons. Um, so the pen International experience. The pen that we're starting out offering is the Pelican M600. Uh, we have the white and violet just because that's kind of what we have right now. <laughs> um, so that's what we're starting it on, just testing the waters. I realize the color may not be for everybody, but this is what we're starting out with. Um, the nibs themselves can actually be swapped onto different pens. Yep. So, um, you know, that is that is a nice little option with Pelican. Um, the ones that I actually have inked up to write with, I have all different colors because I inked up my own personal ones. That works. That with her works. nibs. So I don't have like a bunch of the purple and white ones. Let's see what we got here. So I'm going to have Drew write with them while I explain. Yeah. Well, what we're going to start on. off with the super fine, Brian. So give us, a, give us a little bit of that. That is indeed. So the super fine, essentially, you know, Pelican's nibs, they're Western nibs, they're ground a little broader than Japanese nibs. Um, but a lot of people like to have really, really fine, extra fines. Um, but that's just not something you get from the factory from Pelican. It's just not how they do it. Um, so the super fine is essentially taking a Pelican extra fine nib and grinding it to what you would traditionally see with more of a Japanese extra fine from say Pilot, Sailor, or Platinum. It's gonna be about a 0.3 millimeter nib width, which is gonna be maybe 0.1 or 0.15 uh, millimeters smaller than what you would get with your um, 
you know, kind of traditional Pelican extra fine. So it's a gold nib, still gonna have a little bit of bounce to it. You can get a tiny bit of line variation. Um, good flow, you're gonna get a little bit more tooth to this because it's just less surface area of the nib that's actually touching the page. <clears throat> but it's going to be great for if you like to write really small. Did you write Brain Goblet there? I, I, I did, seeing? I that's did. That's very smart. That's, that was my entire high school experience there with Microsoft Word autocorrecting my name on every paper I ever wrote to Brain Goblet. Anyway. So Brain Goulet equals Brain Goblet. Brain Goblet. Fun indeed. fact for those of you out there. Uh, one thing I really like about the Superfine is that while it might not be you know, exactly a true Japanese extra fine. I find it to be a little uh, wider than that, but the flow is wonderful. Yeah. And that's the thing. A lot of the time when you do get an ultra extra fine or in that realm, yeah, you can get a really, really fine stroke, mm. but in order to kind of corral that flow, you got to bring those tines together a little bit and you might not get as much uh, color or vi uh, vibrance that you would do if the ink was a little bit more saturated. That's a good point. And this, I think, is as fine as you can get while still having really nice flow and mm. nice saturation in your color. Good so point. any fine, any more fine than that, you know, your favorite inks might not pop like they normally do. There you go. Let's talk about the medium or fine cursive italics. Uh, I've got fine here, but I can get. Oh, no, sorry, I've got medium here. Medium, yeah. So I don't have a I don't have a uh, fine cursive yeah. italic on me here. So I just okay. have a medium to represent. So here's both. medium. This is going to be the same experience you get with both of these nibs. The only difference is the line width, really. We kind of already explained what this is with Mark Bacchus's, um CSI grind. This is going to be similar to that. It's just Gina's uh, variation of it. It's Gina's spin. So it's, it's a crisper, then a stub nib, uh, and then uh, it's going to have that same kind of stub variation where the cross stroke is going to be thinner, the down stroke is going to be thicker. So you get kind of that calligraphic kind of effect without really having to do anything special with your writing. Very ribbony, very, very beautiful. Indeed. The medium is going to be about a 0.7 millimeter nib width, and the fine is going to be about 0.5 millimeter. So if you tend to write very small, the fine is going to be great for you. Of course, with the lot wider medium, you're going to see more variation in the width between the cross stroke and down stroke uh, with that, that wider medium. Mm, that is nice. It's like it's just like writing with a ribbon. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly, well, but ribbons, you know, they're 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 pretty uh, they're two two dimensional. They're two dimensional from they the side. Can be. Uh, we grew up in the era of ribbon dancer, which is very three dimensional. That's what it, immediately what popped into my head. What is ribbon said, dancer? Oh, you don't know ribbon dancer? I don't Drew, think so. Drew, as a '90s child, I am amazed that you don't I, know. Is it a TV show? We're, I'm gonna have to show you this oh, after gosh. the fact. No, oh, it's a product. Oh, ribbon ribbon dancer okay. was, a, was a product. Right there with Skip It. Yes, I had an older oh, sister. It the it's a it's basically a ribbon on a drum. stick yeah. and you would dance around. Well, I mean, I definitely know Skip It. Google I mean, Ribbon Dancer. The very best be thing of all was that there was a counter on the ball. Everybody knows that. Ribbon Dancer <laughs> on the street. Okay, so finally the there's a song to go with it. A broad architect. Rachel knows the song, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Rachel! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Broad, yes. Architect. So the Broad Architect, also known as a Hebrew grind, kind of similar effect. So this is essentially, an, an, if you take a stub nib and invert it, uh, or turn it 90 degrees so that, uh, you know, it's wider on the, the, mm, wider on the cross stroke, thinner on the down stroke. So it's, it's basically the opposite effect of what you get with a, a cursive italic. I think that or a, stub. a lot of the time I find that when people can write really good print, Yes. It looks really cool with an architect. I think block print is like yeah. the, the shows off the architect the most. Uh, or if you write Hebrew as well, which is why it's known as kind of a Hebrew grind. Um, so this is um, a very interesting grind. You have to use kind of a broader nib to be able to do it. You can technically do an architect grind on any nib size, but the broad really shows it off the most. So that's what we chose to do it on was the grind. So this is the most sensitive to the writing angle. It's ground to be held at about a 50 degree angle. I know, I just adjusted my angle to <clears throat> yeah, fix this. This one takes the most practice. It's very, it can be kind of finicky and take a little getting used to, but once you do, it's pretty darn cool, pretty fun, and you get an interesting effect with it that you yeah. wouldn't otherwise. 
Um, also, you know, for lefties that are holding this at a certain angle, it might be a little bit easier to use than a stub, particularly um, if you're a side rider or maybe just a little bit of an over rider. Um, it can be really handy. You can get more of a traditional stub look, um, even if you're holding your, your pen at a um, non-traditional angle, let's call it that. So because of the different grinds that we have here, it's a different amount of work that's involved in time and all that. So there are different prices for some of these. You're paying, you know, a premium to get these grinds. Um, and that is because, you know, we're paying these craftsmen. So, um, Which is important. Yeah, this, the, 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 there's a $50 uh, cost associated with getting the medium or fine cursive italic. Um, there is a, uh, the super fine is a little more work, $60. Uh, above the price of the pen, and then the the architect is the most. That one's seventy five dollars. That architect is a beautiful thing to write with. Isn't that cool? And it looks really good under magnification too. It is just really cool. Great. So really happy to be able to offer both of these from two very reputable, very kind and generous nib craftsmen. Yeah, if you've ever had the opportunity to meet either of them, they're super people. They do do different pen shows. They you mm -hmm. know you can contact them through their own websites and ask them about whatever other kind of nib services you may be interested in on existing pens you have, but we're thrilled to be able to offer these new on pens from the ones we have. We're really curious what other nibs that you all are interested in, what types of grinds or what types of pens you would want to see grinds mm -hmm. offered on. That's something that we can pursue as we know that there are things that you're really interested in. So just leave in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check these out on our website, gulepens.com. Thanks so much for watching and right on.